So welcome back all of you. Nana here and then we are into the next day's program of this uh, fusion inventory implementation. Let me go on and share my screen. <clears throat> Today my Java is giving a problem actually. I don't know. It's not coming up properly. I'm giving you missing manifestations actually. Stand collection. Go there we can try this one. <clears throat> If Java is creating a problem, you can clear the Java cache also. How to clear the Java cache actually? Config Java, you will go in huh? config. You will go in config Java, there the option will come for clear cache. Yeah, I can only have what will one option here now in the control panel if you go there. If you go to this place, go to the small icons and then if you click on the Java, tell me where to clear the cache actually here in this place. There is no clearing of the caches there actually. Go in settings, settings, general tab, general tab. General tab. Help settings. Oh, in the settings, huh? Mm. Delete files. Oh, this is a uh, one, huh? Okay, fine. Yes. Files. Click on delete files. Delete files. Trace log. And then, uh, yeah. This is, not... no, this is not required. So click on OK. <clears throat> click on OK. Click on OK now. Let me can try it now again. Try now. <clears throat> Go to the standard collection of this one. I think uh, my server side some problem is there. I think <clears throat> not uh, coming up actually. Oh, Sometimes it happens. Load and login now. Here it's saying waiting, waiting, waiting. This will not go for this much of a time actually. It will not go fast actually. And there is some server problem. <clears throat> Somewhere it's not giving up. Okay, that will go. Awesome. So we'll now go there, go to the open the fusion inventory documentation, and then here we'll now go there, go to the fusion inventory implementation. Inventory worksheet now. <clears throat> On the fusion mental operation and opening the worksheet. So we are going to the next topic now. So now uh, we are into picking rules. We are into the picking rules and then the moment request. It was known as the move orders in EBIS, and then in fusion it is known as moment request actually. And we'll now see a, a generic configuration of this now. Oh God, you have to listen to some notifications. No content, but even the full page has not got loaded. <laughs> some issues now. Right. So I'll now go the and then how about now? I go to this place and open the e-business documentation and then I go to the inventory and then I go to day three, I think. Day three, yes. In day three, oh, it may be day two, I think. Day two, yeah. There is one document called move orders. So on e-business documentation, inventory, inventory day two, you have a document called move orders. If I double click on it, I'll have a Here I have depicted my company, you know, my company layout I have depicted. So in our company, it looks so. So we will be having, uh, what happens, uh, this one. So uh, we call them as invert staging, actually. We call this area as invert staging, which will be having a locator here now. So once the supplier's material come over here, he will now put everything over here and then he will now hand over the paper to the inventory office. So the inventory office will now say it's received and then he will now put a seal and signature and then hand it over to the supplier, he will now go away. And then we have a quality assurance department very near to the inventory office. <clears throat> so they will now inform them and then these guys will now come and then draw the material from the invert in medical area and then put it on a QC test bench and then they will now perform a quality check actually. So we have a quality um, norms for each and every item now. <clears throat> they will now make a check and then they will now segregate the items as a QC passed, the quality check passed and then rejected. Now. <clears throat> they will be keeping out on the reject material. I normally visit, I was the uh, manager of the uh, shop floor actually. So I used to visit this uh, inventory shop once at around 3 p.m. every day. I will not first directly walk in into the rejected area and then see. They would have given a yellow tag there. The yellow tag says that what happened, the monitor has got a small crack in the top. And if I send it, return it to the supplier, this guy will now take around two weeks to repair it and then send it back to me. I will now ask the inventory in charge to power it on. And then if you power it on, it's working normally, what happens, you take it away, you take it inside here, fine, no problem. <clears throat> uh, because I want the, I want this monitor to be kept on the control room immediately. And so this uh, small crack is not a problem. 
So the man who is requesting is the ultimate authority in a PTP life cycle. PTP life cycle requesters are the ultimate authority. Everybody provide a service to the requester actually. So the inventory in charge provides a service to the requester. The quality assurance man provides a service and the supplier provides a service to the requester. The payables clerk provides a service to the requester. So requester is the ultimate authority in a PTP life cycle. Everybody provides services to the requester actually. So I will ask them to move to the QC fast and then the next day in the production meeting, what happened? The QA department now make a lot of halagulas. They will not shout on this. That what happens with the great difficulty, we are not testing it. And then uh, Nana is not accepting our uh, results. Uh, our view, uh, vice president will ask, Nana, what is this? I said, sir, nothing, sir. The, 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 the rejection reasons is not that uh, worth to send it back. So I take it up. So you'll say, okay, fine. If Nana resides, he will not even question anybody. I, I will not be questioned by any authority in the office now. I am the ultimate man, basically. So we'll now come over here now and the pussy pass. This is also a locator for us now. <clears throat> we'll go there. And then we have a put away process. It was not a what's called a, a legacy ERP actually. At the time. In 90s, we don't have any Oracle ERP anything. Oracle ERP came into being only by 1989 actually. So I was talking about 1990s actually. So we have a legacy ERP in which uh, we have the raw material stores. So we will be uniformly loading it. Fine. We have a legacy WMS, warehouse management system, through which what happens? We load them. <laughs> it's a, a IBM's system, IBM's a software actually. So all the, uh, what's called, all the raw materials will be equally loaded by this point. <clears throat> so we have a put-away process. The put-away process will now take care of loading everything equally. And then in our company, we have a planning department. <clears throat> we have item planners, we have a submitted planners, we have org planners. <clears throat> <clears throat> so if we, say we are now producing 50 FGs, there are five planners are there. Every item planner will be asked to monitor 10 FGs now. When they finish goods, they will be asked to monitor. And then what they will do is they will now see the incoming sales orders <coughs> as well as the forecast given by the marketing department. <coughs> so the sales orders, the incoming, and then they will now look at the stock of the FGS, finished goods stores, based upon which their main job is to what? Create the discrete job orders. They should not do excess. If you, uh, if you make an excess job, the management will now question the item planners. If they make a lesser one, the customer will question. So it is like a walking on a double-edged knife, actually. Fine, it's a very difficult one. So they have to plan it. And remember, at the time, we don't have any planning software or anything like that. So they manually plan everything. <clears throat> so the demand supply balancing is a, is a, is a, what's called the skill of an item planner, we will now say. At the time, item planner will be doing it. So they will now balance manually all the sales orders and they will now see the forecast. The forecast will be coming on a monthly basis, actually, from the forecasting department. And then uh, based upon which they will now make a plan and then they will now see that if no, the, cust uh, what the customer is also not dissatisfied, the management is also not dissatisfied. So likewise, what happens, they will now get order. So the main job is to what, create the orders and then it will now go there. And then once when it is completed, it will now come back to the FGS. <clears throat> so FGS will now come to the finished goods. And then from here, uh, we do a, uh, we have a picking process now. Fine. The picking process is based upon the LIFO FIFO method actually. Say for example, items which are manufactured in January has to go first. Now, fine, that is called first in first order. Now, fine. So there are four entities on which the picking rule is going to work. Now, fine. One is serial number, one is lot number, one is sub inventory, and then one is location. Now, fine. Only on these four it will go to work. So for uh, what happens? Let us say the uh, item is having only a serial number and lot number. So what the FIFO will do is it will now try to empty the January stock. And then afterwards, what happens to February stock? Likewise, what happens? It will be emptying one by one. But we will have a LIFO also. For example, I am now manufacturing hammam soap. Now Lux has come with a new fragrance. I already have 50,000 hammam soaps on the shelf of the retailers actually. So what I will do is I will now match the fragrance of Lux and then I will now create a new revision of hammam. I will now say new hammam <clears throat> at the new revision C. A and B are there. Now C is a new revision. So I will only start to sell, I will not withdraw or otherwise what happens, I will not pump in the C revision into the market, into the retailer shop. And then I will ask the retailers to sell only this. one. So by which what happens, I will be able to, uh, what happens, uh, remain in the market, compete in the market. So the new hammam will be sold, but not old hammam. So I will ask the retailer to what happens, to give a promotion. If you buy two new hammam, one uh, old hammam will be free for you. Or otherwise, what happens if you what happens you take two old hammam and then take two to buy two take two free likewise what happens some promotionals will be given and then we will now make a stock clearing sale of the older revisions actually a and b <clears throat> we will now have our marketing department will be having a tactics to clear all the old stock and then uh, even though i have only 5000 of the new uh, revision c uh, a and b will be cleared by a stock clearing actually by a stock clearing tactic tactics it will be doing it 
So as far as revision is concerned, it is lost in first order. But for other things like our serial numbers, lot numbers, supplementary and locators, it will be first in first order. So we will be writing a picking rule in such a fashion that what happens, it will be a combination of LIFO and PIPO. <coughs> it will be a combination of LIFO and PIPO. So uh, what happens is that in this uh, instance, uh, I tested some uh, six or nine months back when the revision is not working actually. So I have devised uh, what happens the uh, worksheet or for a, you know, it's called a, a, a sample one based upon the remaining three and not on the revision. So you can even uh, create one on the revision and then check whether it is working. It's okay. And then it's a bug actually. It's not that. So based upon the picking rule of LIFO and FIFO combinations, the item will be picked up from the finished goods stores and then it will now block the staging area. So there, what it is, we will not clean the finished goods. We will not take the net pipe. We will not pack it in boxes or containers or LPNs, we call it now. And then I will not take a gross weight. And then affix the name plate details like from to and then I will not or mark the statutory warnings like handle with care, explosive, hazardous, etc. And then make the item shippable actually. So the staging activities vary from company to company depending upon the product they are manufacturing actually. And then once when it is staged, once when all the activities are completed, now called stage now. So once it is staged, we will know once when the customer's vehicle comes in, we will now lift the staged uh, pack and then keep it on the customer. This activity is called ship confirmation now. So we will know here, here we are now picking it and then we are, we are shipping it actually. Fine. Put it in the vehicle and then say Tata bye bye to the vehicle and then it will now start to move towards the customer. Actually. And then sometimes what happens, we buy and sell, we don't manufacture it, in which what happens, we will now move the material from the inward staging area directly to the outward staging area right? by the uh, activity called cross docking. A cross docking will not do it. And then here we will now remove the supplier stickers and then put our stickers over here. Right? We will not do anything other than that. Stickers only. There's only sticker, sticker activity in the staging area. So by which, what happens in here? It is a typical, uh, our company area, company layout actually. Fine. It varies from company to company. But the process is almost same. Like, fine. So here, we are going to concentrate on what the picking rule. Fine. We are going to concentrate on the picking rule. And then afterwards, what happens? We will now create a move order. Here in Ebus, we will be getting a move order for movement of material from the FGS to stage now. Fine. So the picking rule will come into picture. And then it will now pick based upon the FIFO, LIFO combinations of this. And then bring it to the staging area. So here uh, in Fusion, the, the movement request, the move orders is known as movement request actually. Any doubts on the generic process of the business now? <clears> How <throat> it works. And we have sub-inventory planners also. And then we have org planners. Sub-inventory planners, what they do is, they will now monitor, let us say, an FGS, I have got three planners for every shift one on planner. So whenever the move order is coming, what happens, the notification will go to him. And then what he will do is, he will now uh, arrange the material to the front actually. Because in our company, material handling damages are very huge actually. So you should now uh, plan it well in advance, maybe half an hour to one hour before. And then uh, gradually bring it to the front end. So that what happens, uh, once when you have to actually move it, they will now move it very, with, a, with a very ease actually. So it may be stacked in a very high, lo high locator actually. From there, what happens, we will now use some uh, uh, small cranes and other things, and then our, even uh, our four clips, and then with which, what happens, we will now bring it to the So sub inventory planners, we will have sub inventory planners for the MGS as well as stage area. This guy will now facilitate the item to come to the front. This guy will now create space to receive it now. Right? He will not be having a pay, uh, place to. So there will be packing area. There will be, what happens, uh, uh, you will be weighing area. So different areas will be there. So this guy will now make space for receiving the incoming. So we will now give a notification to both the in charges actually. So we have sub planners for the FGS and stage. And then we have org planners who are basically the bosses of the item planners and sub planners. They will now monitor everything is going on. They don't do activity and they are the bosses actually. So they will now monitor the item planners and sub planners whether everything is going properly or not. Whether this guy is not making any excessive job orders or he is not making lesser job orders, he will now ensure no. He will also have a look at the sales orders and broadcast and whether he is doing the job properly or not. He will now make a check now, right? So he will also check the sub planners. They are now having MHD as minimum, metal handling damage as a minimum. So the, how our company operates, you know, it was all long back. And then I'm telling you that it is not with the org here. <clears throat> Go there. So this is a business process. Any doubts on the business process? Good then. So we understood it now. Fine. Go there. Click on it. Now, for creating now, the- What is this cross, cross document? When we buy and sell, we don't manufacture it. Actually. So we bring it from the inward area to the outward area directly. And then we will now remove the supply stickers and then affix our stickers and then send to the customers. But it's just only buy and sell. We sometimes what happens, we buy and sell and then we make and sell also. Got it now? <clears throat> yeah, okay. Any other doubts on the business process? No, fine. This is a, not a, what happens, every company will be having this layout. It, it depends. Company to company, it will not vary. 
So our main concentration is on the picking rule. Fine, picking rule and then the move orders. The move orders facilitate movement of material based upon the picking rule and then it will now see the first in first out or last in first out combination and then move the appropriate item from the FGS to the sta staging area. So the move order process has got four activities now. One is creation of a move order. Next is what? Approval of move order. So here, the move order has to be sent to the planner for approval. Item planner. Once when you send it to the approval, what happens is that actually he is not going to really uh, reject or anything else. He will only approve. Fine. He will only approve. But while approving it, he will not take a note that a sales order has come. Fine. The sales order has come. So he will, it will now come into his attention. Now. So he will now compare the sales orders plus forecast with the actual stock and then decide the discrete job orders. And this approval process is yet to come back to the infusion. Uh, already an enhancement request is on. I don't know in 20B whether it has come or not. Fine. If anybody finds that the approval of movement request, if it is there, please send the document. I will now learn it and then I will not teach you. As of now, I don't find it out. Sorry. <clears throat> So it is yet to come now. Approval process is yet to come. So it is creation of a movement request and then approval of a movement request, then allocation of a movement request. You're going to allocate it. And then afterwards, transact the movement request. Okay, you know, transact it and then bring it. First allocate it, which one has to go out now first. And then afterwards, what happens? You know, transact it to the bring to the staging area. So there are four processes, so out of which only two are there. So if you go on and have a look at my document now, fine. I have a move order process now. Fine. In EBIS, I have now clearly told you about how to uh, process it for approval, how to set up for approval such. So the first to 10 setups, the first to 10 setups are basically responsible for approval actually, for approval setups actually. And then afterwards I demonstrate it. Watch my EBIS records, it won't tell you about how to fully approve. Now we go for the allocation and transaction. This is for the creation and approval. The, the approval is it to come now, fine, the infusion. That will be coming soon. And then uh, allocation and transaction. Fine, we're going to allocate. So let us go there and then have a look at it. So we'll now go back to our fusion now. <clears throat> we'll be having one movement request lab exercise. So in Fusion Inventory Documentation, we have a document called Movement Request Lab Exercise, which you're going to find double click on it. Don't know how it movement request lab exercise. So I'm now going to simulate this condition of I'm going to simulate this worksheet now. So I have taken up only for locators, lot, and then Revision and sub there are four things now. And revision is not working. So in this example, I have not taken a revision. Probably the bug might have been fixed. So what happens? You can even generate your own worksheet, including revision also. I am now going to check only for lot, sub inventory, and locator. <clears throat> so I will not do only for these three. Revision was not working some nine months back. And then it was having a bug, actually. Uh, maybe they might have rectified the bug. So I'm not going to test it only for these three. And then you can create your own, uh, what happens, a worksheet or a lab exercise for including revision also. So lot, sub inventory and revision, stop lab inventory. So remember, serial numbers will not come at all. I made a mistake now. Really. Serial numbers are not going to be allocated actually. Allocation will not be there. Right? You will not say that 101 to 104, you, you move it to FG, not like that. All the serial numbers are supposed to exhibit the same properties and so what happens? You don't come in the picking at all. In the picking way, we can pick any serial number. Fine. It doesn't have any method. So these serial numbers do not come, but lot numbers are going to expire. Now. Fine. January lot will expire first, next February, next March. So lot is an important one. And then that comes under the, in the way of picking now. Fine. And similarly, the sub inventories are located. So we are going to test this exercise only on these three parameters now. Fine. So let me create an item with a lot control. Fine. I'm not going to get an item with a lot control. So let me sign in now into my system now. It has come on or not. It has failed actually. Sometimes oh it has come on. Click on the Connections. Sometimes the standard connections mostly the box and all. It works as nice. I think now it's working. <clears throat> it's coming up, coming up. Okay. <clears throat> we'll now go there. Click on it. <clears throat> and then let us now go to the product management. And then go to the product information management and then have a look at it. Hello, Dana. One doubt. Yeah. Uh, regarding the uh, move order approval in EPS. Mm -hmm. As you show now, we have to assign the planner in the uh, for the items. Yeah. And uh, uh, as what we seen in this uh, diagram which you shown now, yeah. we can have the planners by org level and the sub inventory level. No, only org level. Fine, we cannot have it in the sub inventory level. Here, if you okay. see, 
So we have only at the org level now. Fine. Plan as org specific and not sub inventory specific. Actually, we go that close to the inventory. We now go to the setups and then we go to the planners. In setup planners here, uh, I will now choose M one now. Go that click on it. It's org specific now. Go that click on it. So here, yeah, yeah, yeah. plan yeah, sure. is there, and then it is for M one org and not at the sub inventory level. Fine. We will now associate an employee also. So this yeah, yeah, yeah. J Smith is now a planner, and then here it is a planner role. And then we will now put this employee name. Employee name is having a planner role actually. It is not his designation. He may be a junior manager, assistant manager, but this is a, a name of the plan. The planner role or basically created role. Sometimes all of us you will now put the name itself, the employee name itself as a planner name, planner role name. This is the definition of uh, planners. My question is: yeah. uh, Is there any way to assign the planner by org level instead of going by the item level? No, planners are not assigned by item level at all. If you go on and see, the planners are basically Item planners, sub inventory planners, and org planners are defined only at the org level, and then we cannot define them at the item level or sub inventory level. Item has got a planner, yes. Item has got a planner, and then yes. that is used by the planning central actually, and not by the supply chain knowledge. Oh, yeah. Planning central only will have item level planners actually. Planning central will be having item level planner, whereas we don't have any at the sub inventory level. We cannot assign any planners. These two planners we cannot assign any. Planners. Okay. Okay. I, 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 okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Planning central is coming. The ACP model will be having a planner. Now. So if you don't put a planner there, item will not even be or uh, taken into planning central at all. Uh, we have to assign by item level itself. Item level planner required. Okay. It is required only for planning. But for supply chain models of inventory and order management, planners are not required as item level at all. Now my question only for the mode approval. Mode approval we have to give them by the item level only. Not necessary. Fine. Uh, well, no. Say okay. Yeah. Move order approval item planner is a must actually because it has yes, to go yes, to the planner. Yes, so if you don't give the planner, it will never go to the planner at all. Fine. Item, exactly. item planners are must. Okay. I will know there what happens. I create item planner and then I will not just assign the planner to the item. Fine. The fifth step is going to assign it actually. Yes, yes. So if you don't have a planner there, then what happens? The item will never go to the planner at all upon approval. <clears throat> okay. So we are now going to test the allocation and transaction part of it now. Fine. So this is what is going. <clears throat> no, not testing. So we'll now go there. Click on it. We'll now go and then create an item. So click on it. We'll now go to the product management, and then go to the product information management. I'll go create an item which is lot control. Create an item. So it is known as a movement request now. Fine. I will now say A zero one as a M twenty. I'll now put the M twenty over here. Now. I'll now put the root item class. Okay, <clears throat> and this is a MR test item. Fine, we are going to make a MR test item. Let's click on it. Fine, so this is M two D underscore MR underscore test item. <clears throat> so move orders of EBS is known as movement request now. Fine, test item. Uh, movement request item. I go to the specification, then I will now enable the lot. I go to the inventory. I will now make the lot control as a full control, and then for understanding purposes, I am not uh, putting this shelf life control. Now, fine, let it be no control. So we are going to have only one property of this is going to be coming. So we have the exception over here. I want to test that access. So the lot, the sub inventory and locators are going to be tested. Item is having only one control. Out of serial lot revision locator, I am not going to have only one control on the item. So I done it now. So lock control is a full control. The starting prefix is required. So mon underscore something. I'm giving it number one zero. I remember lock numbers are unique across items, and then if it's going to clash, it will not generate at all. I'm not going to generate anything. I'll be manually transacting the lock numbers actually. And go to the associations, and let me associate the child lock. So go to the actions, and then go to select land lock. So let me associate. M two zero one is the one. So then which one I'm going to assign it now. I'll click on apply, and then click on that. Item is assigned. And then you go there, save and close. So M twenty underscore MR test is now ready. <coughs> MR test item is ready now. Point. So M twenty underscore. So you now go there and then give it save and close. <coughs> go there, save and close. So we are saving it. MR test item with the lot control is ready. Now what I am going to do is I am now going to create what happens. The Dyna one and Dyna two are already there. Fine. We have Dyna one as well as Dyna two. I will now give the picking order on this. Fine, sub inventory order. Dyna one, I am going to give one now, and then Dyna two has two now. Fine, in Dyna two, I will not. Dyna two may not be there. I will now go and make a check now. I will now go to the 
and supplement is on locators fine whether click on setup and maintenance and then see whether the dana2 is ready there or not click on it and then go to the search now <clears throat> so manage supplement is on locators manage supplement is on locators i will not put the organization over there now m201 So we have a Dyna one now. If I click on the manage locators, we now see what are the locators. Now. We have got one, two, three, uh, two, two, and then two and twenty-two are there now. Two and twenty-two are there. So we are going to use these two locators combination. So two and twenty-two we are having. I will now make uh, what happens? Uh, thirty-three for the Dyna two. Fine, Dyna two. I will now make it as 30, thirty-three and forty-four. Okay. Thirty-three and forty-four Dyna two. Let me now. Now see on the Dyna two. I will now click on the locators now. Click on the locators. <clears throat> so nothing is there. Click on plus now. Create two locators now. Thirty-three, thirty-three, <clears throat> and then thirty-three, and then I will now make the type as a storage location now. Storage location. So the middle state is already tested now. I will now give a save and close now. <clears throat> and then uh, I will now put the picking order for the locator. Locator, there is no picking order at all. Fine. Forty-four. Go there. Click on plus now. Fine. Now go there. There is no picking order for the locator actually. Fine. In my exercise actually. In my exercise, I will now make it as a storage location and then give it. So we have thirty-three and forty-four over here now. I know that you are. So whereas on the first one, I have two and twenty-two. I have a picking order. My locator has got a picking order. So Dana two is now having thirty-three and forty-four now. I know that you are. So click on done and then come on. Okay, we'll now go to the Dana one. Now go to the Dana one and then click on the manage locators now. <clears throat> so here two, I will now go there and then click on edit now. I will now make a picking order as one now. The picking order is one. <clears throat> click on save and close now. And then twenty-two will be having a picking order of two. I know that you are. I will now go to edit. I will now have a picking order of two. <coughs> Seven rows. We got that. One, two, three. I am not going to use it. So if you if you want, you can even inactivate it by putting end date actually. So you can even put end date of yesterday. So it will never get transacted at all. So that is the only way you can inactivate. Oh God, what is saying? Here you must enter an end date that is on or after fourth of. <laughs> you cannot end date it before. That is what it is saying. Now I am going to click on seventh row. So it's not going to use it. Okay, uh, we can even remove the activeness on this one. Okay, we can now remove it active, inactive. Uh, no middle status is what. No middle is inactive. Inactive means what? No transactions are basically possible now. Ah, there's no inactive at all made now. <laughs> we are not okay, creating inactive actually. Okay, so. Disallow. Uh, you need to search here. Search maybe disallow. Maybe search it. Maybe available. Okay, we'll click on search. Yeah. Uh, no, see, no, I'm not showing there. Actually, we'll click on search now. Uh, in and then uh, click on search now. Ah, uh, how uh, what happens? A uh, professional the demo systems will be having this now. This is a company's instance, and so it's not showing you. <laughs> okay, I can even give a disallow. Disallow is no good. Disallow is no good. M20 disallow is no good. Inactive is not coming. Okay, fine. Well, click on done now. Fine. So one, two, three is disallow. Two and twenty-two are only used, and then they are having a picking orders of one and two. Click on done. And then the sub inventory level also, I'm going to have an order now. I'm going to click on sub inventory. So sub inventory, Dana one is going to have one, and then Dana two is going to have two. So I will now keep my cursor on Dana Dana one, and then I click on edit now. I click on edit now. Sub inventory level I'm editing. So the picking order I'm going to give it as one now. And then I'm going to save and close now. And then Dana two, I will now make it, and then click on edit, and then I'm going to make orders two. Seven rows. So we are now given simulated the sub inventories and locators picking orders now. Fine. These are all the same. So now let me make a transaction for these four transactions. Actually, these four things I am going to make it. And let us now go and then make all the four transactions now. Fine. Brother. So I am going to make four transactions now on this lot one zero three hundred now. Fine. Brother. Click on let us now make the transaction. Fine. Click on that. I am going to make it. So click on that now. <clears throat> now go to the home and then I click on the what's called <clears throat> supply chain execution and then go to the inventory management and then I am going to make it now. So click on it. We'll now create a miscellaneous transaction now, and then the type is miscellaneous result. Miscellaneous result, and then here we'll now go there. It is a ten, if one hundred, if one thousand, is a one. So click on yes now. <clears throat> so go there. Click on plus now. The MR test data I'm going to read. M twenty or M R and then give it a tab. So I will now go to the edit details and put it now. So here the first transaction is on Dyna one and then this is the lot number. Take a copy of the lot number. 
G50. No, it's not a G50 actually. So here itself, I'll make a chain also that I can easily copy and keep a cursor on the top. I will not go and then do it now. So I will not replace it now. Find, find and replace. How do it here? Find and replace. I forgot an Excel actually. <laughs> Control H. Control H will come now. Control H. Find what is what? G50. And then replace with what? M20. Click on what happens. Replace all. Got it. Find the closing. On it. So I'm not keeping take copy it and then this is a lot number. I'm going to do it now. Fine. And the Dyna one on locator 22, 222. Two, two. So I will not choose the sub inventory as what Dyna one. If I make a mistake, please point out. Otherwise, what happened? The simulation will fail actually. So if I'm making any mistake, please immediately point out. So also you put it for the lot number will be coming up. Afterwards, only quantity has to be done. Place the lot over here now. So M20 lot one and then I will not go on this. You okay now? Fine. 222. Two, two. Lot one, lot three, and then hundred quantities on Dana one. On Dana one, two to two, and then lot one, lot three, hundred quantities. Click on OK now. <clears throat> so we are now made the first line. Fine. Click on plus now, and then I'm going to go do the second line again. M20 underscore MR moment request test now. M20 underscore MR. And then for the second line, go there and then click on the edit details now. For the second line, it is again Dana one only, the same lot only, but 22, 22. So the same thing, but the thing is what for the Dana one, <coughs> Dana one. And then the locator is what 22, 22, 22. Even I have no, and then I'll put the lot same lot. I'm going to put it on the lot and then paste it over here. Same lot, and then it's around 100 quantities. The transaction quantities. So the same thing except the locator is now changed now. And 22, 22, 22. Click on it. Click on OK. Second line is now. So we have to make two more transactions for simulating our exercise actually. So I click on plus now. I don't go there. M20 underscore MR, and then you tap. And then click on the edit details. The third one, it is a Dyna 2, it is 104 is a lot. I will not take copy of it now. 104 is a lot. Dyna 2, and 33. Dyna 2, 33, 104. I will not go there. <coughs> Sub inventory is Dyna 2 now. So Dyna 2. So locator is 33, 33, 33. Lot is 104 now. Click on it. Lot is 104. And the quantity is under. We'll again make a check now fine so dana 2 33 104 so dana 2 this 33 and then 104 is okay and go there on it everything is okay and go there, click on it if i make a mistake please point out to me then and there otherwise simulation will fail actually and click on plus one i'm now going to make the fourth transaction the fourth transaction is again what was here 20 underscore mr and get up and then click on the edit details now go on and have a look at it for me so we need dana 2 now this time 103 is required not three is a pair. Dana 2, 44. Dana 2, 44. And then 103. Sub inventory is Dana 2. And then the locator is 44. 44 iPhone, 44 iPhone, 44. Go there. Now the lot number is what? If you go there, lot number is 103 here. 103. And then here go there. And then transaction one is under. I hope that I have not made any mistake. Now find Dana 2, 44, 103. Dana 2, 44, and then 103. And perfect. Go there, click on it. And then we'll not give a comment. Click on OK. And then we'll not submit this transaction now. So click on submit. So the simulation is now getting done now. You can also make your own worksheet now, fine. You make a lab access on your own and then do it now. <clears throat> we'll not go there, go to this place and then we'll not have a look at the item quantities now. Fine. Click on the manage item quantities and have a look at it. And then this uh, M20 underscore MR and you tap now. <clears throat> and then click on search now. And then expand it. We'll not see whether everything is now proper or not. Click on expand it. Sub inventory Dana 1, and then here on 2 2 we have 100, and then 2 22 22 we have 100 now. And then here expand it now. <clears throat> and 33 is 100, 44 is 100 now. Fine. So the locators are also coming, and then uh, how to see the lot here? Lot we cannot see it here now. I don't give the lot out. Is there any possibility if I view and then I go to columns and then see lot numbers now? The quantity field, there's no lot number at all here now. The second one, there's no lot number. So we had only see this. If you keep your cursor on the locator, the lot will be coming now. Fine. The cursor on the locator. And then the lot number has to come. Oh, it's not coming. And we'll expand it further now. Is there anything? Expansion. It comes here, it will be nice. Ah, oh, here it coming itself is coming here. So uh, we have 103 on 22. And then here also, what I'm going to expand it, you'll not see. 103 <coughs> on 22. 103 on 2, and then 103 on 22. And then here we'll expand it, locate now. So 104 on 33. And then here again, what happens? So 103 on 44. Actually. So all these things are coming here. So we are now done. Perfect simulation of fine. We will now write a picking rule now. Fine. 
Picking rule is exactly similar to what we have in Evis Nohain. There's no change at all. Evis also has the same thing. So if you go there, click on it, you will not have a look at the Evis Nohain. So we'll now go to the setups and then you go to the rules and then go to the picking. <coughs> it's exactly the same. In the picking, you go there. Let me query one of the rules now. Control of the one. So we have four constituents on which you can sort now. Lot revision subunited locator here also is there. So you know design whether it's a first in, first out or a, a lot number ascending and descending, all these things are there. The zip date is what the zip date ascending descending or effective zip dates actually, and then the subunit also you got these combinations. All these combinations are available here also. Then afterwards, what happens? You go there and then you keep your custom and then click on the assignments, and then we can assign a picking rule to any of the four combinations. <clears throat> you can even filter it out. Fine, you're going to assign it actually. So click on the assignments, and then we can assign it to any of the combinations. <clears throat> We can even assign it to a customer. We can even assign it to a category, customer or item or a category or whatever you can do it now. Whichever you want. Everything is available in Fusion also. The same way it is available. Supplier also you can do it now. So whichever way you want to assign it, you can assign it multiple ways. So let us now go there and then do in the Fusion now. So you will now go to the manage picking rules. So you go there. Go to the setup. Some of the say, CM task only can be done only with the legal users, remember, not by the security console users. Fine. Uh, go there. So manage uh, PACK picking rules. Entering now. So manage picking rules. Fine. Manage picking rules. Fine. Click on the manage picking rules. Let me create a rule. Now. Fine. Click on plus now. Let me create a rule. So I will now put the rule over here. Now. Fine. It was a M20 underscore picking underscore a rule. I'm not putting a rule now. So we'll not take a copy of it and then put the description. And then shelf life days also we can do it now. If it is exceeding a shelf life, let us say it is now received and then after 15 days, if you want to allocate, it will not allocate at all. It will honor it. Remember. Shelf life days will be honored and then it will not pick at all, fine, depending upon the requirement. We'll now come to the enforce a single lot picker, fine for that. So allow partial picking, it is always done. Fine. We will now allow partial picking always done. Like that. So there are four priorities. In EBS also, what happens? We have got four priorities now. Fine for that. So lot, revision, subunit, locator. So which one you want to have as a first priority? Normally, revision will be the first priority. In any industry, what happens? Revision will be the first priority. And then afterwards, you go and make a change. No, fine that. Revision will be the first priority. And then afterwards, lot serial number. Fine that. I'm not choosing anything. Fine that. I'm not choosing anything. Fine that. And then lot will be why is not coming? Okay, is not choose now. Why is not choosing anything at all? Oh, it is already saved, it's not doing it. So otherwise, what happens? You know, have a look. So revision will be first, and then afterwards, lot subunit located. In fact, in the, in the end customers, you have to discuss about how you want to pick now. How to how you want to sort the sort criteria has to be discussed now. Right? So I'm not going to have a sort criteria based upon my worksheet now. Right? Lot. First, sub inventory next, locator next. Lot, sub inventory. Revision and not bringing in. Revision is a lab access by lot. In the lot, we have multiple combinations. Lot is a first expiry, first out. That is what they will be using. Now. Whichever lot is going to expire first, will be sent out actually. Since I have not enabled the uh, this thing, what happens? I will now say lot is first in, first out. First expiry, because expiry is not enabled in my item. So I am now using. So any one of them, you have to use now. Click on it, last one. So first is a lot. The next is a sub inventory. The next is a sub inventory priority. So sub inventory, I will not say ascending. Sub inventory ascending. And then priority. You can even go for descending or even the reserve date also. Fine. We can even, whichever is being received first, that will be allocated first actually. If it is going to be reserved date on the sub inventory, whatever has been received first will be allocated first. Reserved ascending and descending over there. And I will not say sub inventory ascending, sub inventory order actually. And go there. Click on it. And then the third one is what? I am not going to go for the locator. So I now have only three locators, locators ascending. So this you can may man is save and then what happens? I do a change on this. That's it. Fine go there. So I will now give a save and close now. Fine, give a save and close. So the picking rule is now created. Now I'm going to assign it now. Click on it. I'm now going to manage assignments. Click on the manage assignments. I will now assign this to many things. So here it comes as what in this place we are going to go to the assignments. Click on the assignments and then you can assign it to any combination actually. And you can assign it to any combination. All the combinations are available in Fusion also. And go to the assignments and then you will give a plus. I will give a plus. So go there, click on it. So here, uh, in this place, I will not put the org level now. Fine, the so M two not one is the one. I'm not putting the org level. Sequence is one now. Fine. The picking rule is what M twenty. I will not put the name. Fine, go there. Go there. And then I will not make the item item level. I'm going to assign it. We can even go for the customers or carriers or category. Fine, anything you can assign it. So I will not put it for the item now. Fine, go there. MR. And remember, if you're going to go for different different uh, criteria, this is a filtering criteria. And so you have to talk a lot with the customer now. If you have around one lakh or two lakh items, you just see how difficult it is now. It's not an easy one. 
so we have to discuss the philosophy and then do it now fine try to involve the end client on this now and then uh, one of the person you make him as a super user and then ask him to do all these jobs if it is a laborious job let them do fine the simple jobs you do fine that is how you have to work smart actually was <coughs> a click on it and then uh, make it as active now fine click on it active so you cannot make the assignment to active unless the rule itself is active fine the rule itself is not active so i am not able to make it now fine with that active you cannot make it i will not give a save and close i will not make the rule active and then come back now fine i have forgotten to make the rule active fine with that click on it i will not make edit the rule fine and the rules are elements fine click on done now come on and the assignment screen i am coming out i am coming to the main area fine with that click on it edit now i have not made the rule active so only when the rule is active the moment you make it as active this will not be editable actually click on active this combinations are not active click on it i will not give a save and close the rules active now now i go to the assignments fine with that click on it along manage assignments and go there <clears throat> i will not go to edit now assignments i'm going to edit and not going to make it as active so i have not done only for a simple item once when it is made active nothing can be edited here now fine for a this is a picking rule is going to do it fine click on save and close <clears throat> so it is not done so the setup is complete now now we are going to transact and then see those so i click on done <clears throat> So I will not come out of right, and then I will not duplicate now. I will duplicate, and then if the screen is not coming, keep your cursor on this, and then give enter till now. So I go to the supply chain execution, and then I go to the inventory management now. Fine, click on the inventory management, and then here I am going to move it. I am going to create a movement request now. Fine, click on it. I will not go and then click on manage movement request. So I will not go to the manage movement request now. Fine, click on the manage movement request. So here uh, I am now going to create a movement request. Fine, click on plus, and then it will create a movement request. so the system automatically generates a number but you can even override it with your own number now so let me i will now override it fine system has created a number fine with that i don't know from where from the start number is coming uh, i will now say it is a m20 underscore mr underscore 1 so it is m20 underscore mr one. i will now take it up for description let us say i am now going to create movement request for two things one is for supply chain one is for project actually so if you are doing it for a project for example let us say in anna nagar i am now building a house i have my centralized one in tiruvannur tiruvannur is my centralized go down and then i am now building a house in anna nagar so i am going to move cement i am going to move sand i am going to move bricks to anna nagar site actually so there is a project which is going on so if it is going to be a project issue what i will do is i will not go there click on it i will not what happens i will not make a what movement request issue no fine i am going this issue is for project actually fine if you go there click on it now so here the sub inventories will not be coming the destination will not be coming the source will be coming the destination will not be coming i will now put it to an account actually so it is basically an account issue actually. so if it is going to be a movement request issue it will be an account issue so this is used by the projects so the project issues will be for an account and then there will not be any destination sub inventory the building which i am constructing in annanagar do not have any sub inventories actually and so whatever will not be coming so for project issues we have to give it now we will not come to the source sub inventory after but no fine we will now always always leave it blank so that the picking rule will now decide from which sub inventory it has to source the power of allocation is on the movement request actually the movement request will now allocate the source sub inventory and so what happens it will be normally left blank so i'm going so i will not not use this now fine go that click on it i'm not going to the movement request transfer here i'm now transferring it from what happens fgs to stage now fine this case i will not go to the movement request i will not transfer it from the fgs area to the stage area actually so this is where i am going to transfer it so i am not going to do it so for me fgs is not dyna 1 and dyna 2 i have got two dynas here i will not have a stage i will not use one of the one of the sub inventory is staging now so otherwise i will not i will not create a staging sub inventory also to simulate the exact condition of and click on it i will not right click <coughs> duplicate now let me simulate a staging sub inventory also <coughs> so click on it and then here what is the amendments and then go there click on it and then click on search and then go to the manage sub inventory locate as well manage percentage sub percentage loka percentage and then enter now and go there <clears throat> we will now create what i am in do not want so click on plus and then let me create a stage s t a g the stage sub inventory i am now simulating it and take over it in the description now and then i will now put the location on a m20 and then i will now give a tab now find this coming i am not going to have any structure because locator control is none here now <coughs> that's okay no picking order on this now find go that click on save and close it is asset sub inventory so click on save and close now you know that so i will now move it to this what i will now go there click on it now so movement request transfer go there so destination i am going to give it now find go there along this stage and open the stage so in the header level i have now made the movement request transfer and then mr1 and then the destination say no sub inventory at all the source 
So if you click on plus and then you get multiple lines, the header information will now default onto the lines actually. So click on plus now. I'll go there, click on plus now. And then I'm going to <clears throat> So now I will now simulate this condition now. So I'm not going to move first now. Fine. I will now make the first one. So here I'm going to move it now. I will now see but how it's going to lock it. I will now go for a 60 quantities and then see how the picking rule is going to do it. Right, 60 quantities, I'm going to move it now. Find the on it. So I will not put the item on this now. Find it on it. So it's not coming. So otherwise, what happens? You slightly increase it. The magnifier icon will be coming. Once the magnifier icon, it will not, you can be able to click it inside actually. Let you expand it till the magnifier icon comes in. Now find the on it. Is a M20 underscore MR. And then it now. I don't want to it now. And then I will now go for 60 quantities. Now. And then if you give it app, what happens? You can now see the source sub inventory is blank. The destination is staging. It is now defaulted from the header. And that's it. So unit seven is each one click on it. So the source and destination are getting default over here now. And then I will now give a save. Click on save. And since what happens, you know, there is no control is here now. I give a save. Click on save. So m20 underscore mr underscore one is now created. Fine goes there. I am going to submit it now. So here, since uh, there is no approval process common in Fusion, so it will now go to a pre-approved status. If you click on submit, it will be going to a pre-approved status. You click on submit. So the MR1 is now submitted. And then if you go on the query now, fine, click on search now in this organization, there is nothing at all. Fine. Why oh, yeah, something is mandatory here? I will not put the item over here. M20 underscore MR. And then you have no put the item and then make a search now. Why the double star? I don't understand. Why not we have a blank search here? In advanced, uh, there is no advanced also. There is a double star field. One of them is a mandate field. Baker logo. It is now pre approved. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock it and then I'm going to transfer it also. Fine. Let me go and then unlock it. I'm going to unlock it. So, for the allocation, what happens is we have to run a concurrent action. In EBUS, we have a allocation and transaction in this place. No, fine. So, we have an allocation and transaction in this now. We have an allocation here. You go to the move orders and then go to the transact move orders now. <coughs> and then click on find now. And you'll have a allocate button and then transact button now. So, it is coming as a button here. There, it is coming as a concurrent program. Allocation is a concurrent program. Transaction is a pick wave transaction. Transaction is a pick wave transaction. So this is what you go there and then allocate it. It is already allocated in transaction, so it's not grayed out. So you go there. So this is what is. So it is what you go there, click on it. Now you will now go to the tools. You know, come over here now and go to the tools and then go to the schedule process and then you are going to run a concurrent for allocation. So click on scheduling process. So let us now run the concurrent first. So it is a what? Print movement request pick slip report. Print to move and then give a tab. You're going to click on OK. You're going to print. <coughs> so here for the organizations, the mandatory field find for M21, M201. And then the from movement request M20 and then give a tab now. So we got only one now. Here also the two also and only one movement request find for the Choose the range of movement request now. And then the other factors also can choose now. And then go down. In the bottom. What happens? You say release approved lines. And then if you say yes, it is a location actually. If you say no, it is only going to print it now. This concurrent is now going to only print the moment request. And then while printing it, it will now allocate and print if you say yes, yes. Release approved lines is yes means what? It will now allocate and then print also. And then click on submit. So I'm now allotting it. And click on submit now. We are now going to allocate it. Click on okay. So the allocation is now going on. Source on it now. It is now running. Ready and then running. So once it is completed, we can now see the print slip, pick slip uh, movement request report will be printed actually. It is now going to pick a print a pick slip actually. So it will be printing it actually. So we'll be having what happens a, a printer associated to this machine now. From wherever you're doing it, we'll be having it now. So in the output, we'll be having a republish button. Fine, click on the republish button and have a look at it. And then I click on the wheel icon and then export it to PDF now. We're exporting it to PDF and then have a look at it. Click on save. <clears throat> and then open it up and then have a look at it. And click on it. <clears throat> now you go down and then see this. The print slip, pick slip report has printed now. I will now go on and analyze about how it has done. So now the lot is ascending. Now the incoming transactions will be sorted actually because they, these are the four transactions I made now. And lot is ascending. So uh, on the basis of ascending, what happens? Uh, ascending lot is what? Uh, it will now sort as what? This is the first one now. And then this is the second one now. And then this as the third one now. And then this as the fourth one. This way it will now sort. The transactions will be started on this ascending order now. So one, two, four, three. Are you clear on this now? Anybody has got it out? So one or three is a lot. So based upon the lot, the, the material which is there in the inventory will be sorted as what? This transaction wise, right? One, two, four, and three. It will be sorted. 
Now, on the second sort, it is a subsequent sort, fine. It is a sub sort actually on the sub inventory number. So, on the sub inventory number, if you see, Diana 1 is 1, and then this is also 1, fine. 1 and 2. So, it will be same order only. There will not be any change at all because it's already sorted, fine. So, there will not be any change, fine. So, no, 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 no. It will now make a sub sort on this now, fine. So, this is going to be sub sorted, fine. So, here, whatever is coming on this now, fine, on, it will be sorting on us on a, what is called on the Dyna 1, everything is coming. Then Dyna 2 is coming. And so what happens is there will not be any reshuffle at all. It is going to make a subsort. Fine. These two transactions are on Dyna 1. And so what happens is they belong to one order. And then these two are belong to Dyna 2. They belong to two. And so there will not be any subsort at all. Had there been any order change, let us say, if this is going to be two, this is two, and then this is one, this is one, then it will now get subsorted. Fine. Now here, four will be coming first. 3 will be coming next, fine. 4 and 3 will be coming, then 1, then 2. Are you understanding this subsort now? So had it been like this now? So these two has to come first now. Actually. So it has already sorted as 4, 3. So 4 will be put at the top, then 3 will be coming over here. Then afterwards 1, then afterwards 2. So if this is the order, the subsort, the second level of sorting will now result like 4, 3, 1, 2. Anybody has got a doubt, please ask me. So likewise, it will know sort, subsort, subsort, and then finally, what happens? It will not decide the final orders. Good. Nobody has got it out. Fine with that. Yes, so, sir. Yeah, <clears throat> Lot sort. Can you uh, the ascending? Can you explain one for? Ascending means what? No, no, one not three is first. One not four is next. One not three is the first number. One not four is the next number. Based upon which one two four three has come. So first one not three. Next is one not three. Next fourth is one not three. Then afterwards one not four. Likewise, it will not sort. As for the lot ascending is concerned. Nana sir, one question here. Yeah. If it is considering lot one not three, then here we have one not three numbers or three lots, right? Mm -hmm. Then at that time it has to take one one sorting only, right? Why it is yeah. considered for one not three, two, three sequence? Why it is increasing? One second, one second, fine. Oh, you ask only one question at a time. You are now Asking about lot ascending, isn't it fine? The question is yes, lot ascending, fine. Lot ascending. So lot okay. ascending means what? The first lot has to be allocated first, actually. So it will not sort in this fashion. One not three is the first lot. In this way, it will not go there. It not put no, the no, his question is, sir, uh, there is a the lot three are there. M20 lot. There is no lot three. three. Not there are only two lots. One not three and one not four. One not three, one not three. Why it is taken first one as one, second one as two, and it's fourth one as based four. upon the result date now. This is based upon the receipt date. First of all, it will now put the transaction numbers. Yeah, Madhuraj, you got it down. Yeah. 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 Okay. Based on the receipt numbers, fine. Since everything has now transacted at the same time, what happens? I am now putting this now. Fine. Otherwise, what happens? It will be received on different dates. So the transaction wise, it will now first of all sort, and then based upon that, what happens? It will now do a first sort. Okay. And then here I have now made as a two, and so what happens? These two will now get allocated first. It will be shuffled to the first one, and then afterwards this one. So I'm not doing it number at all. So you understood it number that. Take on it. I will not make it as what one here. So if the lots are same and everything, the quality is same, they say it will be see the transaction number are there. Okay. Let us say if the customer is going to ask for 200 quantities, tell me which which one will be allocated. Transaction numbers, which which one will be allocated for this one? Only for lot. Let us say we have only lot ascending, nothing else is there now. So if the customer is asking for 200 quantities, which which transaction numbers will be allocated now? One they 190 quantities. They 190 quantities is asking for. 190 quantities means what? One and two. One and two. One and two. Yeah, correct now. Now the customer is asking for 20 quantities next. So only only one. How come? Only one. No. Customer is asking for 20 quantities. I have 100 each in every lot now. Two and four. Lot number one. Lot number uh, two, two, and one. Two, two and four. Two and four. Two and four is 100 percent correct. In two, it will now pick up 20, 10, and then the remaining will and be four. Will be four be are you understanding it now? So okay. it's not pick up from more. How come nine twenty? I will again tell okay. the customer is asking for one ninety quantities. It will now allocate on transaction one hundred quantities. On transaction two, it will allocate ninety quantities. Okay. Yeah. And now in the transaction two, ten. No, we got it. If he's asking for thirty quantities. Let us say if he's asking for thirty quantities, it will now allocate on two ten quantities, and then on the transaction four, it will allocate the balance. And then actually, oh, subsequent, uh, subsequent transactions. Subsequent transactions. Subsequent yeah. sorting now. It is already sorted like this. Only I have only one sort. Now. I have only one sort, and so what happens? The twenty only ten coins balance, and then it will go to the transaction four, and then allocate the balance. If yeah, it is still not available, it will go to the next one. Oh, that means one ninety plus thirty again. 
Yeah, exactly. Now, yeah. uh, for now third, okay. what happens uh, in the two, we have 10 balance there, it will allocate that, and then it will go to the fourth transaction and allocate the 20 like, for making it as 38. So, this way it works. Now, for this one, lot ascending, what happens? It has already done this now, fine. Everything is ascending and there is no change at all. So, it will allocate on lot 103 and Dana 1, 2, 2, 2, 60 quantities. Now, go there, you know, see. What happens now? The Puman slip report you can see now. Fine. One. So this is a lot, is a located number, and then this is a lot number, and then 60 quantities are located. Actually, technical will be uh, what happens the formatting this slip report in a very excellent manner. So that what happens is they'll be having a prefabricated stationery. So once when they put it in the laser printer, it'll all be printed in the appropriate manner. So uh, what happens, uh, for what happens uh, picking pick slip report will be formatted with the technical thing, based upon the end client's requirement. Actually. You'll have serial numbers also a lot. So it is an Oracle's format. Uh, they will not put the uh, in, in customers. Uh, Reliance Industries will be coming on the top now. Fine. So whatever uh, client you are implementing, will be there. so this is the first one now. I will close it. <clears throat> now what happens? We go there, and then here I am now going to what? Uh, go for another sixty quantities, and then I will now enforce a single lot. Now. Fine. Let me enforce a single lot. So I will now enforce a single lot. So then what happens? It will not pick the balance twenty from here at all. When I enforce it, what happens? I want a single lot. And so 103 is a single lot now. Fine, was that? So uh, once again, once again, uh, what I did now, then I want 22, 22, 22 is now picking now. Fine, why it is not picking from this place now? Fine, what is the change I have made on this now? On the second picking, it is now allocating 22 and 2. Fine, uh, enforce a single lot will, uh, will, what happens? Uh, will not take up this now and then take up this now. It, will be <clears throat> it has to take up the remaining 40 now. Fine, it is not remaining taking the remaining 40. I made some changes and then I forgot about what is the simulation I have done on this now. <clears throat> a lot of 103, Dana 1, and then it will not pick up from credit. <clears throat> it will not go on and see this one. I don't know how to look at it now. So close it now. <clears throat> now go to this place. Do this. And now go to the moment request now. And now here, what happens? You go there. <clears throat> on the moment request, I now go to the picking rules now. And go to the picking rules. And then uh, click on edit now. Active is coming. <clears throat> uh, is is what's called a, it's called assignments actually. The rule assignments coming here cancel now. Give it done now. And assignments I will not give it done. I will not go to the main rule now. I click on it. I will not click on edit now. I will not edit more now. <clears throat> so here, as long as it's active, it cannot do this now. <clears throat> if you cancel now, I will not have to edit now. I will click on it. I will have to, not this one. I will now go to the M20 picking rule now. If I click on it, so I have to remove this activeness now. How to remove it? Okay, this is editable only when there is no assignments. Actually, this becomes editable only when there is no assignment. Fine, I click on it now. I will now go there. I will now go to this place and then click on the manage assignments. I will now first of all what happens? De deactivate the activation over here. Then only the main rule can be edited. If there are assignments existing for picking rule, we cannot do it now. Fine, give us save and close. You know, done. Click on it now. Now the main rule can be edited. Fine, go there. Click on it. I will now edit the rule. Now it can be inactivated. Now, if I allow partial picking, then only what happens? It will not pick the thing. If I don't allow partial picking, it will now allocate everything as per this. Dana one from 22, 22, 22. The remaining, the next 60 will be allocated. Had it been partial picking, it will now pick up 40 from here, and then it will now pick the balance from here. No, partial picking is not allowed. I go there. Click on save and close now. And then if I activate it, I had to, what happens? You had to activate it now. You go there. Allow partial picking has been removed. Fine. Click on save and close now. And then now go to the assignments. I go there. Click on it. I now go to the manage assignments and then enable the assignment. I go there. Click on it. Edit now. I now enable it. So enable it and then save and close now. I now enable it. Now we will now create another moment request now. I go there. Click on it. We will now go and then click on plus now. Let me create the second moment request. Now. I'm click on it. M20 underscore MR underscore uh, moment request 2 now. <clears throat> M20 moment request 2. I'm going to click on it. Take it over and then put it in the description now. So transaction type is move order transfer now. The destination stability is what? Stage. And then click on plus now. Fine. I'll now put the same item and then I'll now go again for 60 points. I'm going to click on it. Item is what? M20 underscore MR. <clears throat> uh, and then you tab now. I will again request for 60 quantities now. Now partial picking is not allowed. And so what happens? It will now pick up from the other one. Click on submit now. So then there is not another click on submit. <coughs> we are submitting it now. So if you go and then search again, you will now find the second one as a pre-approved now. We will now run the again. 
the same concurrent of another click on it so we now run the same concurrent of another click on submit schedule new process and then I click on okay now and this time it is the mr2 organization is what k91 uh oh, sorry is a it's a m21 now from moment request and then if you leave it blank it will not print for everything actually it will not print for everything it will not print for everything so go down and then go there and then i will not what happens it will not release the approved lines this is going to be basically allocation come okay i'm submitting it so i'm now leaving it blank it will not print everything thank you for submit now printing is not for every moment you want it you will not see 22 22 22 will be allocated but partial picking is not available it will not try to pick up so it's not running now go there it's not running so click on it then you will go around and then republish it now click on the wheel icon export other export to pdf now go to pdf I can see I'm going to have a look at it. It will not print everything now because we have not given anything. Fine weather. So it's not coming. Fine weather. Moment request first is what? 2 to 2 is the first line of it. It's already printed actually. And it's again printing it. So go to the next one. Here what happens? You can now see. 22, 22, 22 is allocated actually. Fine. It is open picks means what? It is allocated actually. Open picks means what is allocated. So open picks means what is allocated. Allocated will be open pick now. Fine weather. It is not going to be transacted actually. So we have to go to the pick wave and then transact it actually. So since what happens if you now remove the partial picking for your exercise? What happens? You can even enable the partial picking, it will not pick up the remaining from 2 to 2, and then only it will not go to 22 to 22. Are you clear now? Fine. So it's not that. Now, for the third exercise, what I'm going to do is I will not go there, click on it. For the third exercise, what I'm going to do is go there, click on it. So here I will not enable the partial picking. Fine. I will not say enforce lot. I will not enable the enforce lot. You pick up only from one lot, I'm saying enforce lot, I'm doing it. So I will not allow the partial picking also. Enforce lot and then partial picking and go do it for 90 quantities. We'll see how it is going to do. So I'll not go there. Click on it now. We'll not close it now. Fine. We'll not enforce the lot. Click on it. No enforce the lot. But that uh, quantity is showing 20 only. How come it's not showing 20? It's not showing it's 20. partially picked only. Huh? If you say that it's partially picked. Ah, it is a partially picked. Huh? Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, I have not seen it. Okay, it is partially picked. Fine. One second. It is not partially picked. Click on PDF now. <clears throat> I have not seen it properly now. It is partially picked. But partial picking allowed was not there. Maybe partial picking will be working for uh, what you are uh, this thing now. One second. I will now republish it. I will click on it. I will export to PDF now. <clears throat> partial picking, maybe save it and then have a look at it now. The partial picking is not for this now. It is a correct one. Fine. Click on it. So here uh, it is now showing two things now. Fine. 40 and 60 does not pick now. So it has now picked 40 from 20, 20, 20, and then the remaining 20 has been picked from 20, 20, 20, 20. That means what? Partial picking is for uh, different multiple lots, I think, probably. Partial picking is not allowed, and then it's for multiple lots, actually. It's very correct now, 40 and 20 is not allowed. So the partial picking is for multiple lots or multiple things. And here, partial picking is not allowed. And so for the same lot, so it is now picking up only from this. Maybe if you put a tick mark, it will now do everything from 20 to 20. You make a check on this now. How it's behaving. And I scroll down. It will not have anything. And the end report. Okay. The two pages are there. Actually. So now ah, it now, will pick uh, partially, right? One 40 hmm. from uh, what other, 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 other lot and so 20 from other partial lot. partial picking is not allowed, uh, it has now uh, picked the balance from 20 to 20, 20. You see how it behaves now. I'm not, I forgot on it actually. Fine. You see how it's behaving it. You see about how it's behaving it. Fine. You make a check of it and then see how it's behaving. <clears throat> yeah, I think it means partial picking in a lot context now. If you see both of them have been picked uh, from the same lot. Same lot, lot actually. Yeah, yeah. Partial so picking. Maybe allowing, lot not context picking context. Is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, it's good. Partial picking okay. from a lot context actually. I, I think uh, no, it will not be lot context because you have lot. One second. You will, you will not enable both and then see. Now, 222 has got no stock at all. 2222 has got 80 stock now. 80 stock is there. I will now go for what? Uh, we have 80 stock. I will now go for what happens? Uh, 190 now. I will now see 190. I will now go for it. I will now see about how it's allocating. And 190 I will now go for it. So I will go there. I will now close it now. I will now go to the manage moment request. I will now go to the picking rule now. Click on it. So let me make a change of this now. I will click on edit now. I will now remove it. Remove the activeness and then save and close now. 
and save and close. And then give it done now. I'll not come to the main rule now. I'm going to click on edit now. And here, the activeness will be coming from there. I will not allow partial picking and then enforce lot. We'll not see how it behaves. These two things I'm enabling it. Got it now? Another yeah, but uh, Nana, that allow partial picking, what how that will work is, if if it will follow the same priority that you already have, yeah. but if you are able to find the full quantity in those priorities, right? Uh -huh. It will pick. If you don't have that full quantity, it will not pick. Uh -huh. You're getting my point? No, it will not fail like that. You will not test it also. No, no. Uh, so so basically, if you have hundred. Mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, in your uh, movement request, right? Yeah. And if it finds hundred across the Lord sub inventory locator, it uh -huh. will pick it. But if across all of them it finds only fifty, it will not pick. Okay, if this is disabled, actually. if this is disabled, yeah. it's fine. If it is finding only fifty in one sub inventory, it will not consider the sub inventory all for allocation. The the entire thing, the entire thing. Okay. It will it will it will check the lot. It will check the sub inventory. Uh -huh. It will check the locator. And, and, and the if it finds the full allowed. quantity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that is what I uh, is what allow partial picking. Oro is saying now fine click on it. So try to simulate and then see all the thing now. I'm now simulating these two things now fine click on it. I will not go for 190 quantities now. Fine, you'll not see what how it's all okay. 190 quantities I'm going to do it now. Allow partial picking, enforce a single lot now. So uh, in the it has got 180 and then uh, what happens? I will not have got another hundred only. So it will not fail actually. If you go there, it will not fail. 190 will not fail. It will not fail to allocate. So it's not done now. And now go to the assignments and then enable the assignments now. Like it's now slightly taking a longer time. Fine, please wait for me. Eight forty-five. You're not able to complete now. Fine, click on it. So click on seven close. Now I will again repeat now and click on done now. <clears throat> I will again repeat and click on it. So here, if you edit it, so allow partial picking is allowed, enforcing a single lot, and I'm going to go for one ninety quantities. In the two two, I have around eighty quantities left, and then on the fourth one on the transaction, fine, go click on this now. Here, what happens in the 2 2 uh, in the 22 22 22, I have got 80 quantities, and then in this one, 103, I have 100 quantities totally put together. I got only 180 quantities of the lot. Fine, I'm enforcing the lot. If you see this, what happens, I'm now enforcing the lot. So, if you go for 180 quantities, the allocation itself going to fail actually. The allocation will fail because what happens here, it is 80, here it is 20. So, on lot 103, we have only 180 available, lot 104 is only 100, so it will not fail because I'm enforcing the lot. I'm enforcing the button. So let us now simulate this now. Fine, go click on it. We'll now save and close now. We'll now simulate it and wait. You go to the manage moment request now. Fine, click on it. I'll now, uh, you go there. I will now create a new one now. For 190 quantities, I'm going to create it now. M20 underscore MR underscore 3 now. So go there. 3 is there. Take your right and then put the description now. Go there. Transaction liquid moment request transfer. The destination is stage now. Click on plus now. I'll put the item there. So it's got M20 <coughs> underscore MR. And then 190 is a quantity. This will now fail to allocate. Fine, because one lot, 103 is also not having 180, 104 is also not having any 180. So it will not fail. Now. And you see, and then what happens? The third one is not done. Now. Now then, so it will now run that movement request. Now. Go to the monitor process and then we will now schedule a new process and then click on OK now. I will now run it only for this now. And organization is now M21. And then it is M20 underscore MR underscore 3 now. I'm going to click on it. Oh, M20. <clears throat> search now. Not choose the third one now. <clears throat> ah, what happened? Moment request number is not coming. Click on the search now. Oh, the organization is wrong or what? M2 not one way, you know? Give a drop down and then search now. And MR3. Okay, now MR3. So take a copy of it and then put in the request now. So I'm now going to allocate only for this now. I will now allocate it. And then wait now. Fine. Now it is going to fail actually. Fine. Click on solve it now. Because we don't have on any one of the single lot, we don't have a sufficient quantity at all. 190 is not available in any of the lots. So allocation is going to fail actually. So allocation will be failing now. Click on complete it. So I'll go there and then have a look at the output now. Click on it. And then click on republish. Go there, click on it, export to PDF, and have a look at it. And then save it and then open it up and then see now. Click on open and then have a look at it. And you can see what happens. Unallocated moment request structure. It is not allocated at all. Now let us now modify the pixel click now. Fine, go there, click on it. Let us now modify it. I go to the assignments and then unassign it first of all. And go there, click on edit now. Edit, remove it now. And then give a save and close. 
and then come back, click on done, and then come out of it. Go there, click on it. I will not modify it now. Click on it. Then I will not enforce the lot. Single lot is not enforced. And click on save and close now. Now, one not four also will be used for picking it. One second. I will uh, go there, click on it. I will not go there, it. So let us know. Activity also fine. No enforcement of lots. So click on save and close. Although partial picking, you make a check of it. Now find how Guru is saying. You just see at the beginning of it. Go to the place. And then here, edit it. And then uh, again, activate it. Save and close. Now I go to the moment request process now, and the monitor process. I will not repeat the same because the parameters are the same. I will not resubmit this now. So I will not select it and then the parameters are the same. Fine, click on resubmit now. I'm not running it. It is now asking, do you want to use all these parameters? Click on yes now. Fine, by which you are knowing now. So it's not running. So this time it will allow it actually. Try very many combinations, you will understand it now. Right? Sort, subsort, subsort also. You make an RD on this, how it's exactly behaving actually. So much of R&D has to be made on the moment request. Click on succeed, go down, and then have a look at it now. And click on republish now. So go there. This time it will be allocated because there is no enforcement of a certain lot now. So click on save, and then have a look at it now. <clears throat> Hold on. Show, and then click on it now. Click on it. Now what I'm saying, now see it's allocated. So from 22, 22, 22, it has not taken the 80. And then from 33, 33, 33, it has not taken 10 now. Fine, go there. And then the remaining 100, since what happens, it's not come. I thought that it will not take up from this itself. From, and the, <laughs> it has not taken only 90, and then 100 it is now allocated fully. Come on, Gaura, come. How, you, can you explain this now? <laughs> 103, 104, it has not taken it. Huh? 104, it has taken up 10, and then okay, 80, 100, okay, the same thing. So on 103, 80, and then uh, on the 103 lot, on the 100, the balance from 104 actually is correct. I have no better understanding. So enforcement of a single lot is not there. So on the first of all, it is now go and then pick because it is a, uh, ascending the lot number ascending, and so one not three it is allocated the twenty eighty, and then another eighty what happens hundred it is allocated from uh, 44, 44, 44, and then it does not take up the one not four lot for the balance ten nature, even though it is now printing in the uh, hash manner. Right. Uh, so it is taking lot wise. Yeah. Uh, is lot wise first of all because lot is ascending now, and so what happens first it is now allocating the one not three lot. Then afterwards, one not three, and then afterwards, one not four. Who is this who talked to me for last now? Surendra. Surendra, okay. So one not three, one not three, and then one not three. Are you all clear on this now? Now simulate different things on the on the on the lab exercise and then try to see about how it's all behaving actually. This completes the discussion on moment requests and picking. Tomorrow you we answer. Okay, okay. We, we are going to transact tomorrow. We exactly. can override at the time of transaction, right? Exactly. We yeah. can very well override the transaction. And transaction we are going to see tomorrow. We are going to see the transaction of this uh, PIX tomorrow. We can very well override this. System allocation can be overridden by the inventory in charge. Any no doubts on this now? Yeah. Is there approval or no? There approval. is no approval at all. Approval is yet to come. The enhancement request is already on. So in Fusion, there is no moment request approval. It goes as a pre-approved actually. Only planner assignment? No, no planner assignments also there. The only when approval is comes, then the planner assignments will be coming into picture. Uh, For planning central, we need to have a planner. Apart from that, the normal supply chain do not need a planner actually. Yeah. Tell me. Yeah, see, uh, Kartik was asking, right? Suppose today you allocate it. It's like a more of like you block these lot yes, from this uh, sub it's yes. allocated. allocated. Tomorrow, yeah. out of uh, three requests, one only you are trying to transact and as you said, uh, the guy... Yeah, back order it. If you don't back order it, uh, what happens, it will be getting allocated and then remaining there. Okay? Yes. So next, when you do any again pick, it will not consider, right? These exactly. already it will allocated. not consider. You have to first of all back order it and then afterwards, what happens, you have to do it. Generally, it will get released actually. Once when it is allocated, that particular allocated quantity cannot be used for anything else at all. Is that manually? Can we do manually? We can very well do. Fine. Why to go for moment request at all? Moment request is not required at all. When you want to have your own, you move a sub inventory transfer and then do it. Moment request the power of moment request is allocation. This is the power of moment request, and then you can overwrite the allocation. It will not suggest you this way you do it. Fine. If, if you don't feel correct. Then you can override the system's recommendation and then you can then go by your own for during transaction. 
another thing is pick slips no, no. Uh, in sub inventory transfer we don't have pick slips right of course naturally sub inventory transfers do not have a pick slip sub inventory transfers do not have an allocation so these are the two advantages which you have on a, on a, when compared to sub inventory transfers when compared to sub inventory transfers these two things are not there there is no pick slip on the sub inventory transfers and then there is no allocation in the sub inventory transfers so move orders is a very powerful tool good <clears throat> i think there are no other questions but it's no call it a day now hello i'm going to stop the recording